Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and uh, uh, oh man, this sucks. So, came down into my beloved game room this morning with a bit of a surprise, and you're gonna see it here. Yep, water and even worse, mold, bad. Ugh, this, this sucks so bad. So basically what happened was, is that I'd been noticing a little bit of a weird smell lately, but again, it's a basement. And so it's underground and yeah, you know, sometimes smells are kind of part of the gig, but man, it was when I came down in my socks and I stepped down on the carpet and I was wet and it shouldn't be wet. I mean, I've, I've owned this house for 12 years. It was built in 1961 and it's never ever had a problem. So come down here and I step in it with my socks. I'm like, whoa, at first I thought it was actually my dogs. It's like, oh, did my dogs pee down here? Like, that's kind of weird. And uh, sure enough, I moved my entertainment center and immediately I was like, oh no, oh crap. Like there is all this nasty mold down here and it had been there for a while. So I immediately pull everything out of the drawers of this entertainment center and put it over here just to get it out of the way. I still haven't gone through all this to see if it's molded or rusted. Uh, it breaks my heart. This, again, this this is like the worst nightmare of a game room owner. It's, it's terrible. Now that said, you can see here, it's actually not a ton of water. So I think I got lucky that it didn't just flood my basement but I still don't know what the heck the problem is. So we have a good friend of ours, Bob, who is a home inspector, who offered to come over and try to at least give us an idea of what might be going on. And you'll see here that he has this infrared camera that can see the differences in temperature inside of a wall. Pretty cool stuff because I guess if something is damp, then it will technically be a different color of something that is dry around it. So you see him scanning my wall here, which is really nice because you don't have to cut into it to at least give you an idea where the problem lies. Now, the big challenge with my basement is, is that half of it is buried underground, as you see here in this illustration. So I can't just go outside and look and see where the problem might be. On the other side of that wall is my yard, is dirt. Another tool he uses is this moisture meter. You see this here and it has a sensor on the top and basically whatever you place it against, it'll tell you how much moisture is there, but it also goes into the wall. It's actually, I mean, this just seems like, you know, sci-fi Star Trek stuff to me, but it's pretty cool. So he can see exactly where inside the wall the problem lies and give you an idea just how big of an issue this is gonna be. And from what he can tell, it's isolated to just a specific point in this corner. You know, my wife and I are racking our brains trying to figure out exactly what has changed. I mean, we've lived here for 12 years. This house has stood since 1961. And the only thing we could think of is that we recently put in, within the last year, a parking pad. Before that, we just had dirt in front of our house to park our cars. And they tied into our drainage system in that parking pad. And so one of our theories is that maybe when it rains really hard, it overflows the drainage system and then therefore pushes too much water down by our basement. We're not entirely sure. So at this point, it's kind of good news, bad news. I mean, the good news is it seems like it's a small drip and it's probably not gonna flood my basement, but we're not entirely sure where the problem lies within the foundation itself. So we're gonna call a company that deals with that specifically, but that's gonna be another day. And I got to thinking, I'm like, you know, I haven't flipped over this entertainment center. So let's see just how much mold is actually growing on the bottom of this thing. So I empty out everything, flip it over, and then look at that. It's ruined. Not only that, you can't really see it here, but actually the wood has expanded. It's it's absorbed some of the, the moisture. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I gotta get everything out of this corner as possible because again, I'm not entirely sure where it's actually coming in from. But you can see here with that box moved, it doesn't seem like it's in the corner at all. I mean, he detected moisture, so 
I, I suspect there is some back there, but it doesn't seem like it's affected the carpet, which is great. It's the next day and Permadry has shown up. And the first thing that they want to do is cut into the wall, which, oh man, all right. This makes me a little sad because, well, basically this, <laughs> that's the beginning of the real problem because once you cut into the wall, you know that you're looking at dollars and uh, you know, you can't avoid it. They need to get in there and actually see what's going on. So he cuts this little patch right here and is looking to see just how much damage there is. He still doesn't know exactly where it's coming from yet. He still doesn't know, so he asks if it's okay if he cuts a bigger hole, which again, just, oh man, my heart was sinking here because I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> this totally sucks. Oh, but we got to figure this out. It's at this point that he notices that we have something called form ties put into our foundation. Now, again, I'm not a construction dude, but basically what he said is that they use these metal ties. They're very small, almost like nails, to hold pieces of your foundation together. Again, this would have been done back in 1961 when the house was brand new. But he's noticing here that they're there and that could potentially be the problem. So what he does is he asks my wife, Rebecca, to go upstairs into the front yard, get the hose, and then just leave it in our front like area right there, that little flower bed area, and just leave it on full blast. And look, in about 10 minutes, the water starts flowing. Now, again, we are probably five feet underground right here. At least that, that tie is right there. And you can see within about 10 minutes, the water starts trickling in through this little tie. It's rusted out, basically. So the Permadry guy left. He's going to give us an estimate and tell us exactly what we need to do to fix it. But in the meantime, this thing is stinking. I need to get rid of this carpet because honestly, like, I thought it smelled a little bit before, but once I exposed it, it is horrible. So I'm going to cut out this huge chunk of the carpet, try to get all of the mold and just get it out of here. So at least it doesn't smell. And the pad underneath the carpet is, well, it's soaked all the way through. Actually, I could have squeezed it out here like a, like a towel. It was absolutely disgusting. I was holding my breath here. <laughs> Probably should have put on a mask, but thankfully we don't get any black mold in the Seattle area. That's very uncommon. It just, it just stinks and I just want to get it out of here. Also, this entertainment center is doomed. It's dead. I mean, I could try to put bleach on it and kill the, the mold or use a product called Kills, but no, no, I'm gonna have to get an entirely new entertainment center for the game room. I heard back from Permadry and the problem is a tough one. So the big issue is, is that we are underground. See, my yard is literally right there. It's, that's, that's the top of my yard. And so we're so far down here that in order for them to fix this on the outside, they'd have to remove a huge chunk of my yard just to get it all the way down to here so that they could fix these ties on the front side. Now, the guy was like, that could cost you $40,000. I was like, oh my gosh. Not only that, but just digging up, you know, half of my front yard would be brutal. So what they recommend that we do is that we put an interior drainage system in the basement itself. And here's the problem, guys. Three of these little metal ties here are failing on this side right here, but my entire foundation has them all throughout. So eventually I will have the problem everywhere. Yay! So that's what they recommend is that they come in, we remove four feet of sheetrock, my entire basement. So three fourths, three fourths of the walls need to be removed down to the studs so that they can come in and put some sealant. They basically, I forget what it's called, but basically it's a sealant on the inside. They dig a trench around the entire perimeter on three sides and then tie it into the drainage system on the outside of the house. So for that, that's gonna cost me $7,100. And that's with me doing the demolition. That's with me removing the sheetrock at about four feet across my entire house. So that's pretty exciting, but it gets better than that. For them to even start doing this, I've got to take everything that is currently next to the wall and move it five feet away from that. So everything you see here in my game room, all of this stuff, 
uh, everything, the TV, the entertainment centers, all have to be pushed five feet inwards, which as you guys can see, I don't have a ton of room because in the center of my of my basement is a fairly large stairs and also um, we have this fireplace, we have our furnace. And then to top it off, that's simply just to fix the problem. That's just simply to fix my foundation. Once they're all done, then I've got to pay somebody to come in and re-sheetrock my entire basement. Those four feet that I remove, I have to have replaced, obviously, and also the carpet, because they're, again, they're gonna dig into the area here and put a trench, essentially. And so the carpet, I assume, all around my basement is gonna be, at least a certain point, is gonna be, uh, is gonna need to be replaced, or I don't know. So, I, you know, how much is this gonna cost me? Uh, well, I know it's gonna at least cost me $7,000 to get it fixed. Sheetrocking, I have no idea how much that's gonna be. It's been so long since we did this, I'm thinking it's gonna be another couple thousand dollars. Uh, the carpet could be, you know, a couple thousand, I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's so interesting how such a small little thing in my foundation has been fine for over 50 years and now suddenly is starting to fail and it's causing all these problems. It's gotta be honest with you guys, I did not expect this to be my Christmas, but you know, so be it. Now, the reason why I'm letting you guys know about this is because, well, really two reasons. Uh, the first one being that I shared some photos on social media and a lot of people saw that and were concerned, wanting to get a status update from you. A lot of you have game rooms yourself, so you're very interested in sort of how all this works out and the cost and you know how it applies maybe to your situation. Uh, so I, that's why I wanted to let you guys know. The other thing is too, is that I have a lot of other videos in the can that we shot in November before all of this happened. And so you know that this happened now, but like in a week, you'll see a video where my game room is suddenly fine. And that's the reason why is because, you know, there'll be videos coming where everything's back to normal and you'll be like, what the heck? So that's the reason why I wanted to let you guys know that this is gonna be a work in progress for a little while. I'm gonna work around it. Hopefully you'll, you know, you'll never actually know. Uh, I may do a follow-up video as, as the, you know, as everything progresses, but you know, I just wanna let you guys know. Sorry guys to be such a downer in this video. And again, I wanna be perfectly clear here. It could have been way worse. I mean, as far as I can tell, no games were actually damaged, and that's the number one most important thing is, this is a very small leak. Yes, it's gonna be expensive. <laughs> Not looking forward to that, but I got lucky. And you know, it's part of home ownership, so I'll definitely get through this. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care.